Facebook. Good evening, Facebook family and friends and co-workers and everybody. Good evening. And I want to say a special good evening to our ICF family. Amen. I just want to thank you all for um, hanging out with me here. Y'all give me a minute because y'all know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I am so grateful for each and every one of you that um, take the time and come out and uh, spend your time with me on tonight. Amen. I had a special guest, but I don't know what happened, but sometimes things just happen. So I had to pull up something and... Um, so we're going to go with what we know. Amen. We're going to go with what we know. I know we had been doing the gifts um, these last couple of weeks and whatnot, but I, I really had wanted to save that one. And so I'm just going to go and get something. I, I just went and got something just a little different. It's kind of in the same vein, but it's a little bit different. Um, so you all bear with me on tonight. Amen. Somebody say amen. It's good to have you on. Um, uh, Pastor Rita, it's good to have you on. She's all the way in Cleveland or Toledo, Ohio. And um, I just want to say hello to you and thank you for coming on and sharing your time with us. And Denisha, thank you for coming on, uh, sharing your time with us as well. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I do want to make a couple of announcements. Um, I want to um, announce on uh, today is Wednesday, so Thursday, um, so the men will know we will not be having um, the men's group on tomorrow, actually for the next two weeks, we won't be having it, but I'll announce it again next Wednesday. Um, we won't be having it because we all know that um, Brother Floyd has um, buried his mom um, I guess a week or so ago. And so we want to give him time to, um, you know, get um, in, get back into motion. Amen. Somebody say get back into motion. And so we want to, um, we just want to be sure that we um, keep him as a family in prayer. Keep not only him as a family in prayer, but keep his family in prayer. Amen. And then um, Friday we'll have our, um, we'll have our team's, um, prayer on Friday at seven o'clock. And so I will be uh, uh, sending a reminder out for prayer. Amen. Somebody say amen. So let us go ahead and begin with the word of prayer. Father, <clears throat> Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, on tonight, Lord God, for your very presence, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that even through the mist, Lord God, you're always here and you're always available. And most of all, you're always on time. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you open up your people's ears, Lord God. And Lord God, enlighten them on tonight, oh God. And give them knowledge, oh God. Give them understanding, oh God, to comprehend all that you have for them in this great hour, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to continue to raise them up in the spirit realm like never before and empower them, oh God, to do all that you called them to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your hand of grace, oh God, stretch them unto a new level, oh God, that they become more hungry for the things of God in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as your servant, oh God, I step back and I yield to your spirit, oh God, and I ask you to speak through these here, to this vessel of clay on tonight, oh God. Not that they just hear my voice, oh God, but the voice behind my voice. And that they adhere, Lord God, and, and obey in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you gird up my lips, Lord God, and you speak through my lips. And most of all, Lord God, think through my mind, oh God, and unveil this word like never before to our very spirits. And we as the people of God shall forever give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in the mighty, mighty, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
the Christ. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. First of all, we always want to honor the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here with us on tonight. Amen. <clears throat> so tonight, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I don't want to keep you long. Amen. How many of you wear glasses? I know I do and a lot of us do. Oh, and the first thing that we do when we wake up in the morning, I don't know about y'all. I shouldn't even say it like that. <laughs> but when I wake up in the morning, y'all, I just open my eyes and I have my glasses on. <laughs> but I know most of us probably go around and they kind of pet and they look for their glasses. And, um, and that's the first thing they do to start their day off. Amen. You um, typically get up and, 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 and look for your glasses. And have you ever, ever woke up and you couldn't find your glasses. Mm -hmm. Everything is blurry and out of focus. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you seem to be totally out of sync in everything that you do and try to do to find your way is by petting and actually looking for those glasses. Amen. And then when you finally find them, it's a big relief. Yes, somebody say it's a big relief. But see, I don't remember y'all. I don't have that problem <laughs> because when I wake up, I have my glasses on. Amen. <laughs> and so anyway, when you find those glasses and when you get started in your glasses, you can breathe again. Sometimes it, sometimes it makes you feel like you're out of breath because you cannot see. Being able to see is so very important. So you feel like you're in touch with things again simply because you can see. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now it seems like you got it all together, huh? It seems like that your focus is on, your patterns are better. Come on, somebody. You can even make sound decisions. How many of you have ever tried to make a decision without your glasses on and you're looking for something and you're trying to think and you, and, and, and you just need to see? Come on, somebody. You feel like when you found those glasses, you have finally, finally come to life and you begin to realize that all it was is that you couldn't see and that your focus was off. You recognize immediately, come on y'all, without your glasses, the world seems like a different place. Oh yeah, it seems like a different place. Mm -hmm. You see your glasses had given you a sense of confidence. Oh, somebody got to hear me in this. A sense of security, oh yes. Knowing that what you see is really what you see. Oh, my, my, my. So now you're able to focus and have a clear visual. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. No more wondering and no more trying to figure it out and no more guessing. Come on, somebody. In other words, your self-assurance is back. And you can now make a sound decision, oh hallelujah, and there is no question to what you see because now your vision is clear. Come on, somebody. And that is what I want to discuss on tonight. God's plan and purpose for your life that it may be made clear and your vision is sharp and your focus is right on target. Somebody say right on target. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what I want to uh, focus on tonight is pursuing your God-given vision. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you would, if you could turn to in your Bibles with me to Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk 2 and 2. And if you're having a hard time finding Habakkuk 2 and 2, because I know we don't read it that often, but we should, go to the book of Matthew and then back up about five books and then you'll find it. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say thank you, Pastor. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. All right, all right, all right. So 
Habakkuk 2 and 2 reads, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, come on somebody, hear me. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not tarry. Let me read it out of the Amplified. The Amplified reads, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes by may be able to read it easily and quickly as it hastens by. For the vision is yet for an appointed time and it hastens to the end of fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it because it will surely come. It will it will not be behind hand on its appointed day. Amen. Somebody say amen. So the scripture uh, reads that the Lord answered him. So he must have previously asked a question, huh? He must have previously asked a question. How many of you know that God, how many of you know have a question Let's say that. How many of you have a question for God? A question that you need God to answer. Know that he's waiting mm -hmm, on you to ask that very question because he has all of your answers. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And as he reveals it, be sure you're ready. Be sure that you take notes. Come on, somebody. Be sure that you write it down, record it, and take a picture if you have to. If you have to, take a picture, but engrave it in your heart. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hear me. Engrave it in your heart so it becomes understandable unto you and so that you can run with it. Somebody say, so I can run with it. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And as you run with it, y'all, it begins to process. It begins the process of activating your faith and pursuing your God-given purpose. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hear this. Your vision awaits your action. Your vision awaits your action. So tonight, you all, I challenge you to take on this quest. Somebody type that for me. Your vision awaits your action. Your vision awaits your action, Elder Bobby Cobbs. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For what God reveals to you, it shall surely come to pass. And your appointed time is now. Somebody say, my appointed time is now. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So take heed, you all. Pursue it. Chase it. Run it down until you, you can't run no more. Run that vision down. Your God-given vision comes until it comes into clear focus. Somebody hear me until that vision comes into clear focus and it is totally fulfilled in Jesus name. So whatever the vision God has given you, you make sure you run it down. You make sure you pursue after it. You make sure you run it down until it comes into total fruition in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm in full pursuit of my God-given vision. Go ahead and type that as well. I'm in full pursuit of my God-given vision. 
Oh, bless God. Bless God. Let's get some clarity, you all, on what vision is. The Hebrew definition states, a sight, a dream, a revelation, an oracle, or a vision. The dictionary describes it as the actual facility or manner of perceiving with the eye a vivid mental image produced by the imagination. Oh, my, my, my. I'm going to say that again. A vivid, mm, when you say vivid, that means like a clear, a vivid mental image produced by your imagination. In other words, you are perceiving sight or vision with supernatural ability, with perception and insight of images mm -hmm, that gives us awareness of the future of our developments. Oh my God, oh my God. Understand this, you all. Our imaginations are so powerful that we have the ability to perceive thoughts in the future. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, my God. You see, when God gave us these minds, he gave us creative ability. Somebody say, I have creative ability. Mm -hmm. Not just limited in seeing pictures in your mind, but the five senses as well. Not only can we imagine or see images, but we can imagine, mm -hmm, we can taste, come on somebody, we can smell, oh bless the name of the Lord, and we have feelings and we even have emotions. The mind is a terrible, y'all, thing to waste, but it is a powerful, mm, my God, my God, the mind is not only a terrible thing to waste, you all, but it is a powerful thing to waste. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. So whatever God has shown you glimpses of, whatever God has told you, come on somebody, envision yourself doing it. Uh-huh. Allow your imagination to take you there. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Vision is like seeing the finished product. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Before the work is even done. I'm going to say that again. Vision is like seeing the finished product before the work is even done. Oh, bless God. Mm -hmm. Bless God. See yourself, you all, in your tomorrow. Oh, hallelujah. Allow your imagination to take you to the unseen realm of who you really are. Oh, my God, my God, who really God has called you to be. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you see yourself in that unseen realm, when you see yourself in what God has called you to do. You can begin producing what God has called you to do because you can actually see it. Somebody say, I see myself. Ah, hallelujah. Say, I see myself. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. It could be in visions, you all. <clears throat> it could be visions of your ministry. It could be owning your own business. Come on, somebody. We're going to have some business owners in the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. And I mean in IFC, we're going to have some business owners. Everybody ain't called to the ministry. <coughs> but there are a lot of things that you're called to that God has called to take you into a higher dimension. Oh, somebody got to hear me in that. You could be one that write the best seller of books. You ever thought about that? You could be one of those ones that is sells those best seller books. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And you could be also one of those that could be ministering to thousands and thousands of people. Come on, somebody, raise your hand and say, that's me, that's me. Oh, my. 
Oh, y'all got to hear me in this. Y'all got to hear me in this. Envision yourself doing whatever God has shown you to do. God has shown us some things. Even when we were children, God was showing us some things. He was telling us some things. I tell you, he used to speak to me as a child, and I'd be sitting in front of the heater trying to read my Bible. Come on, somebody. And he would be saying, it's, it's going to be all right. I'm telling you, it's, some things may be going on, but it's going to be all right. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody, and bless the name of the Lord with me. I heard a preacher say it like this. Vision is a revelation from God who reveals his purpose and original intent for your life before you were born. Oh, my God, my God before you were born. If you all could turn with me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. And I'm going to uh, read this one out of the NIV. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Mm-hmm. Now, that's good, ain't it? Excuse me, you all. So as God uh, uh, reveals his original intent for your life, begin to see beyond and begin to see your beyond as a right now. Come on, somebody. To see beyond your circumstances. See beyond what you're going through. And see your right now. Oh, hallelujah. Because understand, that's part of his plan. His plan is, first of all, to prosper us and to give us hope in a future. Somebody say that. Hope in a future. And to see us as a finished product. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. His, he wants to see us as a finished product. Oh, hallelujah. Right now, you might be even in a financial hardship and you can't even see your way out. We've been through this corona and a lot of people have lost their jobs and going through problem after problem. But I tell you this, begin to see yourself beyond that. Begin to see yourself out of that. In the name of Jesus, you may not even have a job today. I know I'm talking to some folk here tonight, but you may not even have a job today. But see yourself in a job. See yourself working where you want to work at. Ride by some places and call it and begin to claim your job in the name of Jesus. You may be even sick in your body, uh-huh, but see yourself healed. See yourself walking. See yourself standing tall in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to some folks right here. You may be struggling with some kind of, even some kind of addiction. Come on, somebody, but continue to see yourself beyond that. If it's alcohol, continue to see yourself beyond that in the name of Jesus. If it's drugs, continue to look and see yourself beyond that. Don't see yourself stuck in your situation. Begin to see yourself beyond that. Begin to see yourself on your job. Begin to see yourself with your children again. Begin to see yourself in your family again. Come on, somebody, and hear me in this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you see yourself beyond yourself, circumstances, beyond what you're going through, come on, somebody, your uh, creative abilities can come alive. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Your creative abilities can come alive in the name of Jesus. Because, why? Somebody, I heard him say why. Who? I heard him say why. It's because your God-inspired imagination and there is nothing that can keep you from accomplishing your God-given vision. He has given us a God-inspired imagination. Why? Because we are his people and we are the believers. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, my God. 
Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Here it is, y'all. A strong imagination strengthens your creative abilities, which can in turn change your life. Oh, my good, my God, my God. I'll say that again. A strong imagination strengthens your creative abilities, which can in turn change your life. So we have to take some time and begin to sit before the Father and begin to imagine, come on somebody, our strengths. Begin to imagine what God has shown you, come on somebody, so that those creative abilities can in turn begin to change and begin to turn your life around. No longer are you looking at those dead things. Come on, somebody. But now you're looking at those things that God has shown you, that God has spoken to you in the name of Jesus. And that, again, creates and brings alive those abilities in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. What happens is, y'all, your imagination gives you a sneak peek of your vision. Somebody say, I've got a sneak peek of my vision. And if I pursue it, ha, if I pursue it, it is mine in the name of Jesus. Vision, come on, somebody. Understand that vision becomes erupted and purpose is then birthed out. Oh my God, my God. Vision is erupted, y'all, and then it's birthed out. Oh my God. Never underestimate you all the power of your mind. You got to hear me in that. Never underestimate it. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Why should we pursue our God-given vision? Mm-hmm. Why should we pursue it? Well, I'm glad you ask. Vision sets you free, you all, from the limitations of what your eyes can see. Oh, my God, y'all got to hear me in that. And it allows you to enter into the liberty of seeing how God sees. My God, do y'all need me to say that again? Somebody let me know. My God, vision sets you free from the limitations of what the, what the eyes can see. See, our eyes can limit some things, but our, but our imagination, it allows you to enter into the liberty of seeing how God sees. Oh, my, 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 my. So begin seeing yourself, you all, as God sees you. And begin telling yourself, I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Come on, somebody. You can do exactly what God says you can do. See yourself as God sees you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Understand that what God has purposed you all for was according to his purpose. Ha! It was according to his purpose, not your purpose. You had nothing to do with it. Oh my God. Turn with me, you all, to 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Oh my, 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 my. Bless the name of the Lord. Second Timothy 1 and 9. Who have, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according, hear me now, somebody need to underline this, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Oh my God, my God, understand that God has given us a specific plan for your life. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. And it was planned before the foundation of the earth. Oh, glory to God. He already had decided and made provisions for you to become it. Oh, hear me, y'all. Y'all got to hear me. Hear this. It was a finished job before you were even born. 
my God, my God, my God. Somebody type for me. I was a finished job before I was born. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. So understand, you all, vision is not a wish list. It's not something that is far-fetched. Come on, somebody. But it is an assignment from God. It is an assignment from God. So know that whatever he has purposed for you in your life, he will reveal it. Oh, my God. As long as you are in him. That's the key. As long as you are in him. Oh, my God, my God. Some of you may have gone to school. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about after you went to your grade school and high school, you know, went off to college and you thought you was, you, you, you say, well, I'm growing up and I think I want to be a lawyer or I want to be a doctor or I want to be this and I want to be this. Mm -hmm. But he has purposed you exactly for what he has purposed you for. Mm -hmm. And when you are in him, you have to submit to your call. Come on, somebody. You have to submit to your call and do as he has purposed in your life. That's where the anointing is. That's where you overcome. And you say, well, you know what? I'm doing the same thing as Jimmy John over here. But look at what I'm making over here. And we got the same position. Come on, somebody. Because God puts an anointing on it. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. So as he unveils this, it's not a mystery. Uh, only The only reason it would be a mystery is because you're not in him. Come on, somebody. So as he reveals it, you begin to move in that direction and trust his lead. Come on, somebody. Type that for me. Trust God's lead. Oh, yes. And understand this, you all. No one else can accomplish what he has for you but you, mm, my God, my God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Turn with me in, the, in your Bibles to Ephesians 1 and 4. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I done, I done, I done broke out here, y'all. I done sweated up my glasses. I almost can't see. <laughs> bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Ephesians 1 and 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So know y'all that we've been called, we've been selected, and we've been summoned and chosen and chosen by him alone. My God, my God, what an honor, y'all. What an honor, not only an honor, but a privilege to be selected and set aside by the King of Kings. Come on, somebody. And the Lord of Lords. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Even before the groundwork, hear me, y'all. Even before the groundwork was established in this world. My God, my God. <clears throat> and, and guess what, y'all? We didn't have nothing to do with it. We didn't influence God not one way or the other. God's decision, it was God's decision to save us. Uh-huh, it was his decision and his decision alone. He saved us, hear me y'all, according to his plan. My, 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 according to his own plan. Somehow, y'all, it makes me think he gave deep consideration to us mm -hmm. in order to select us for his own purpose. Mm, somebody say, I'm special. I'm special. Mm -hmm. And him even knowing, listen at this, y'all, him even knowing what we would be like. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he knew what we was going to go through. He knew what we was going to do. He knew we was going to be, oh, my God. Think about all that you've done. Just, just think about that. Oh, 
Father keep done. He knew all of that already. Mm -hmm. He knew we was a mess. Some, some of us, like me, was a hot mess. Come on, somebody. I should have been dead, uh-huh. Yes, I should have. Uh-huh, and I know a lot of you as well. Mm-hmm. I should have even lost my mind, all the things that I went through. But somebody say, but God. Come on, somebody. Somebody type it for me. But God. Mm-hmm. If the enemy, enemy would have had his way, None of us, not none of us would be standing here. I'm talking about the group of us. None of us would be standing here today if the enemy had his way. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, my God. So anyway, let me get on here. Let me, oh, my God, my God. But understand this, y'all. God kept showing me glimpses. Mm -hmm, of my future and I want you to take some time and think about that because if not only did he begin showing me just glimpses he began showing you glimpses whether or not you knew what they were but they were just glimpses of what he was showing you of your future my god come on somebody he kept on sounding the alarm for me my god he kept covering me. How many of you did he keep covering? Oh, my God, my God. He even, in spite of what I was doing, in spite of what I was going through, in spite of me, he kept covering me. He kept covering me. Somebody got to hear me in this. He kept covering me. You know why he kept covering me and you? Because he had a plan and a purpose for our lives. And what no devil in hell going to stop it. My God, my God. Somebody say it again. But God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So when we take that time and we begin to ponder over what we've been through and understand how much God really, really loves us. How much he loved us, even in our mess. He already had something already prepared for each and every one of them. So continue to allow God to show you those glimpses. Continue, continue to hold on to them and begin to walk them out. Begin to speak them out of your mouth in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, my God. Mm. Understand. We were predestined to be here. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. His influence, y'all, was already in the earth realm before we were born. My God. My God, my God. So you are privileged to be God's chosen. Mm -hmm. God's mighty warriors. Yes, we are. We was warriors when we was in the world. So what better warriors could we be in the kingdom? Oh, my God, my God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Mm. My next uh, point is, how do we pursue our God-given vision? Oh, I got to get the moving, y'all. <laughs> Proverbs 19.21. Y'all go with me there. Proverbs 19.21 says, you can, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. If you're not sure what God has called you to or what his purpose for your life, ask him. Go ahead and begin asking him. Remember, he has all of the answers. Mm -hmm. So ask him to illuminate it for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have trouble trying to understand what God is saying. But begin to ask them to illuminate it for you. Tell them you rode on a yellow bus, the, the small one, right? You know, a lot of us say, I rode on a small yellow bus, Lord. Help me to illuminate that to me so I can see it. Come on, somebody. My God. So what is it? What is it that you have a desire to do? What is it? What is it that you've always had in your heart to accomplish? What is it? 
What is it that motivates you? What is it? What is it that brings you joy? What is it? Mm -hmm. Maybe even when you were a child. Something that you've always imagined. Go back to your childhood if it takes that. Mm, my God. And then think about what it was that you began casting aside. What was it that you began casting aside? Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a light bulb that never really went out. Oh my God, my God, hear me you all. Is something that you may even have tried to sweep under the rug, but it still continues to come out. It's almost, y'all, like a fire that still burns on the inside of you. It may flare up every now and again because it never really goes out. And understand this. That is a good sign. That may even be your God-given vision. With me, you all, I can say this, and I probably told you all this before. I always wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. We would play school and I wouldn't play unless I was a teacher. Ask Pastor Rita. I wouldn't even play. <laughs> I wanted to be in charge. I wanted to be the one that gave the discipline. Come on. And I did spank the kids. You know, we had them little rulers. I spanked their hand. They got so sometimes they wouldn't want to play with me. <laughs> and I had all the rules. I had all the rules. Mm hmm and you must follow them or there were going to be consequences. Absolutely. But through life's changes, y'all, through life's challenges, the flame began to go low. It began to burn low. And I almost didn't recognize it anymore. Because of my directional change in life, my God. But when I came back to Christ, but when I came back to God, my flame, come on somebody, began to burn again. Oh my God, my God. My vision came alive. My God and my God-given purpose is now being activated in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not only the teacher, y'all. Come on, somebody. I'm the pastor and I'm the special gift. That he, has, that he has given to this body of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And I give him all the glory. I give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a hand of praise for this long-awaited God-given vision that birthed into purpose. Come on, somebody, and be on time and allow God to birth you into your God-given vision. Oh, my God. Your God-given purpose in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Let's give God a hand of praise. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. There may be somebody here on tonight. Let me get my, give me a moment, y'all. Let me try to get my altar call up here. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy. Glory to God. He's worthy. He's worthy. Mm -hmm. He's worthy. There may be somebody here on tonight, you all, that heard this message and now they want to begin to pursue their God-given destiny. Mm-hmm. And how you would go about doing that 
It would be the first thing you would need to do is to step to Jesus. He is the master. He is the master of the visionary. And he is the one that has and gives these visions. And if you're not saved, and if you're not born again, this is your opportunity to come and accept him as your Lord, your Savior, your Master. And at this time, if you want to even rededicate your life to Christ, I ask you to come and I ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord God, I repent. I change from my ways. I want to follow you for the rest of my life. I want to come in newness and become that new creature in Christ. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you died and rose on the third day. And I receive you now in the name of Jesus. And it's just that simple. And if you have repeated that prayer after me, you have been born again. You have been rededicated to your life with Christ. And all the angels in heaven right along with us. Oh, welcome to the kingdom of God. And if you would like additional information, all you have to do is to inbox us here at International Christian Fellowship. Myself, along with Pastor Rita, would love to disciple you. We would love to love on you and teach you and help you to raise up in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, you all. Let's give them a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. So now we're going to get ready for, we're going to get ready for our tithes and offering. So give me a minute. Let me pull up my little doohickey over here. <laughs> Let me pull up my little doohickey over, over here. Yes, here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope you all enjoyed the word on tonight. Um, I thank God for each and every one of you. Knowing that uh, you're here on with me every Wednesday and you're here on with Pastor Rita every week. And, um, you know, know that we are really grateful for you. Know that. I'm having a hard time finding my little doohickey, y'all. Give me a minute. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Let's see here. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, no, baby. Give me a minute, y'all. Sometimes it takes me a minute. It takes me a minute. It takes me a minute, y'all, but I get it together. I get it all together. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Ain't none like him, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God. And old Pastor Rita, she's out there in um, uh, she's out there in Ohio, um, uh, enjoying herself. I'm so glad she got to get out there and see her new grandbaby and everything. All right, so let me. I still got one more thing to do. Maybe I'll just set that on top of there. Y'all, all right with that? <laughs> Wait a see. Hold on. No, that ain't the right one. Y'all got it. This gets a little overbearing when you're trying to do it by yourself here. But, uh, okay, I'm going to just leave it like that, and we're going to go ahead on. Y'all know. Hey, look, say OG. OG, you all right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and prepare for our tithes and offering. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to uh, read the scriptures. Uh, did, uh, oh, hi, hi, Denisha. Thank you, thank you so much. You are so amazing, young lady. Mm. 
Okay, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 reads, but this I say, he who spares, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or, or of necessity, for God loves a what? A cheerful giver. So you all, when you give, be sure that you give for, from a cheerful heart because God, we know that God loves a cheerful giver. And so we want to be sure that we give with gladness. We want to be sure that we give with joy and most of all with love. Amen. So understand, we're not trying to get something from you, but we're trying to get something to you. Come on, somebody. Say you're trying to get something to me because we... What we do, we take this time and we honor our God and we honor him and we give him thanks with our tithes and our offerings. <coughs> and we thank him for what he has done in our lives. Amen. Somebody say amen. So understand this, where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Where your treasure is, there also is your heart. So come on, let's um, go ahead and, and uh, lift our offerings up to the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So Father, we thank you and we praise you on tonight, oh God. We give you <coughs> all praise and honor, Father. We thank you for everyone that gives, Lord God. And we thank you for those who have a heart to give but are unable to give, oh God. We declare a hundredfold blessing over each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for IFC and we thank you for it is a debt-free ministry along with our debt-free members in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray the blessing over them. We pray overflow over them and we pray abundance in you in the name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen and amen. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Well, well, well. I'm almost, oh, I made it on time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So um, let us go ahead um, with the benediction. I want to say um, thank you again all for coming on. Um, thank you, uh, Elder Bobby, for coming on. And um, thank you, uh, Latasha. There's my Latasha. And there's the real Wilma. Ooh. Oh, the real Wilma. Thank you for coming home, the real Wilma. <laughs> Amen. We love you. We love you all. So now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before our one and only great God, both now and forevermore, be glory, be majesty, and dominion forever. Have a good night in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. Good night and know that we love you. Bye-bye.